Hello, I'm Joseph Bente. And I'm Sandra Spriggs. We're here at the Westlake MacArthur Park Station in the heart of Los Angeles' new Red Line subway, the continuation of a Southern California transportation revolution. On this edition of Transit 2000, we're going to be going back to a city that many call North America's mass transit showplace. Some say it will give us a good glimpse of Southern California's transportation future. An integrated mass transit system makes getting around Toronto, Canada easy and convenient, but responsive service is essential. The Toronto Transit Commission adopted some innovative ideas to keep commuters happy and on board. These days it seems as if traffic congestion is everywhere, even when you try to fly away from it all at LAX. But plans for the new Metro Green Line could provide an answer. New fuels and redesigned automobiles are other answers to congestion and pollution. I'll look into what energy companies like Arco are doing, as well as other innovations down the road. All this and a lot more on Transit 2000. Toronto, Canada is 3,000 miles and a country away from Los Angeles. But the two cities have a great deal in common. Each is a multicultural capital, and each has a major transportation system. As we know, Los Angeles is dominated by freeways, while Toronto has become North America's preeminent center for mass transit. In his rural home, Harry Shardlow prepares for his daily commute, 50 miles to downtown Toronto. It's 6 o'clock on a foggy morning, and traffic is guaranteed to be snarled. On the eastbound QEW at Islington, off to the side, but slow. Also an accident, Gardner eastbound at the Humber, looking at the other problems, so all causing slowdowns heading into Metro. A quick goodbye to his wife, Brenda, a reminder of plans for an early dinner that night, and Harry's commute begins. So far, not much different from a typical commuter's morning in Southern California. But during Harry's hour and a half trip to downtown Toronto, he'll spend only 10 minutes in his car. The rest will be on board this 80 mile an hour train. It's part of a 264 mile commuter rail system called GO Transit. If this train looks familiar, it is. The same double-deckers are used for Southern California's new Metrolink. It's so idyllic to be on the GO train like this in the morning. It's a nice quiet ride. It's, you know, it's nice and comfortable. I can read my paper. When I was traveling in by car, it's bumper to bumper going into the city. There's just absolutely no comparison. Luke Parsons is chairman of Ontario's GO Transit. The GO system is an inter-regional passenger commuter service involving both rail and buses. And uh, we are this year 25 years old. We're celebrating our anniversary. We have 150 train movements per day, and we carry 37 million riders. In addition to that, we have some 300 buses, uh, which are some natural gas buses and some diesel fuel buses, that carry people to the places where we don't have train service. We presently have 67% of the people that work in the central business district in downtown Toronto arriving by public transit. By world standards, that's a very great achievement. Arriving at downtown Toronto's Union Station, Harry Shardlow is still a couple of miles from his office. But it will take him only five minutes to get there, thanks to the city's convenient subway system. Toronto has a quite an extensive subway system. The trains are geared for the rush hour. For me, it's just a matter of walking off the train at Union Station, which is one of the major subway stops, and getting on the subway, and I go up three stops to where my office is, and it's about 15, 20 feet away from the subway. So it's, it's, a, it's a perfect connection, and the, the subways run every 20 seconds, 25 seconds during the rush hour, so there's never any problem getting the train, and it's, a, it's sort, of a, sort of a natural extension of the trip. The difference, primary difference now, I think, is that I'm much more calm and relaxed when I get to the office in the morning because I'm not fighting traffic coming in. So when I get to the office now, after reading my paper for about an hour or so on the GO system, I'm much more relaxed and better prepared to meet the day, quite frankly. Long distance commuters like Harry Shardlow aren't the only ones who benefit from Toronto's integrated mass transportation system. 
There's no better example of the success of mass transit in Toronto than here at the Eaton Centre. Not only is this the city's main retail marketplace, it's also a major tourist attraction. More than one million people pass through here every week. 75% of them use mass transit. What's the secret to Toronto's mass transit success? Transit officials say it's three words, service, service, and service. The Chief General Manager of the Toronto Transit Commission, or TTC, is Alan Leach. Women are 58% of our passengers. They're our biggest market share. And we've determined, uh, in, you know, in the last five years, we better start uh, working with our, our big market share and doing the things they want us to do because if we, if we start losing uh, the biggest part of our market we're in big trouble. And we went through all the stations, all 65 stations at night with the police officer, the firefighter, uh, the women's group, our safety people, our security people and we identified every area that created a cause for concern and we made a commitment to them that we would eliminate them all and fix them all. Safety is a major concern of most transit passengers. It's a top priority here in Toronto. This is a designated waiting area. It is monitored when trains are in service by a television camera. Especially at night, lonely subway platforms can seem intimidating. Knowing that you're under the watchful eye of transit security is reassuring to many train passengers. Another popular security program is in place on Toronto's buses. Females had a concern that about getting off of buses late at night at their stops and having to walk a long way, so we've set up a request stop program. And that any female after dark can request a driver to let her off anywhere on the route, whether it's a stop or not. Other examples of TTC's commitment to passenger service are everywhere, including special buses for physically challenged travelers. Inside the system, at major subway stations, another customer conscious program involves video monitoring. Kindly let the patrons exit the train first, please. Utilize all doors, please, when boarding Keeping the train. Keeping track of passenger traffic allows TTC service staff to direct rush hour crowds to less congested platforms. Even the direction of escalators can be changed to respond to increased demand. Despite a showplace transit system, many Toronto commuters remain as committed to their cars as is the average Southern Californian. Increasingly, however, they are driving only a part of the way to their destinations, leaving their cars at park and ride stations, taking the train to downtown. Others come to closer kiss and ride facilities like this, where car commuters drop off train travelers, often ending the need for a second car. Part car, part train commutes save money. In Toronto, downtown parking is expensive and increasingly rare. For example, the city's Blue Jays baseball stadium holds 50,000 people, but transit-minded planners provided only 600 parking spaces. As a result, most sports fans take the train. At the end of the day on the GO train, Harry Shardlow relaxes during his 50-mile commute home. And he's not the only satisfied but demanding Toronto commuter keeping GO Transit and the TTC on track. I think it's an excellent system. It, it's very reliable, so it always seems to be on time, and uh, it's very clean, very comfortable ride. I think a lot of people like the GO Train. Having a car is more of a liability, really, because then I have to pay for parking where I live, then I have to pay for parking where I work, and gas, and so on and so forth. It actually saves us money because before we had two cars. And now that we're both commuting into the city, we have eliminated one of the cars. So it's been a cost saving uh, for us as well. I'm going back to school during the mornings. So I take it down to the University of Toronto campus uh, after lunch to my office, uh, usually out to the pub for the evening and then back home again. They're always there for you. I like it. It's a good system. Take a train to LA airport? It's possible. Stay tuned.